between Baez and Flores, the tail of the tape. What stands out, B-Hop? What stands out to me is the age and also, you know, and it should be because uh, Chucky is well traveled. He's a battle tested veteran. Might be a little long in the tooth here. He's been in some battles. Yeah, he's looking awkward in here. Yeah, very awkward, Doug. I mean, if you look at his stand. He's Maybe it's up. just, you know, it's just, it's really, he's not warmed up. And that's, and that's an yeah, that's the dangerous part for him because he's not warmed up and he's getting hit with some really good shots coming in with his jab. Body shots landed by Baez in the black and gold. I think he's, that makes him susceptible to the body, but he's also, when he gets his body behind his punches, he's landing heavy. And he has found a home for his right hand against Baez. And he just took two good left hooks to the ribs. Okay. Baez, the way he holds his hands, he's susceptible for uppercuts. That could be a key punch for Flores. He shots early like that and don't keep that distance. He just tried to throw that good uppercut, Doug, that he just missed, but that was a good punch to throw. Yeah, he just didn't have the right distance. Baez, his camp with Joel Diaz, and he's going upstairs. Celine Wild, I did not see that coming. I will totally admit that. I judged him by his record at the body. Baez, he, you're right, Doug. He's, he's dunking some good punches. He was competitive with Danny Roman. He yes, says something. He hung tough. He had his moments. He soundly lost, but going 12 rounds with Roman is not easy. Uh, and Figueroa, Lion. Baez, black and red, misses wild with the left, follows with a solid right. And when a fighter is struggling to make weight, Body shots the next day really is the result of an accidental headbutt. Yeah, there's, there's probably going to be more clashes of heads the way these guys are fighting. Let's check out Doug's scorecard after three rounds. That could cause an accidental headbutt based on close, but right now they're both giving and taking both shots. Both guys are taking their best shots from each other. Showing more effects on Chucky than Flores' right hands are showing on Baez. Look at the balance. Yeah, the no, balance. It's, his equilibrium is off. And it, it might have a lot to do with the weight. Also, <laughs> it's Chucky, but that's how you say it. Chucky Lozano. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh good uh, shot from Baez. That snap back the head of his opponent. That uppercut. He just took a good right hand. He's been taking some good shots in the last couple of rounds. Push but, his leg, but his legs. That should have been a takedown based on to encourage you outside the ring, based on motivating you. Come on, you're losing this round. You need to hear that. Have the proper nutrition and to push himself in Sitting down on his punches here, the final seconds of the round. Solid round for the Chicali. Get to that corner. Look here at comes a left uppercut, and he threw that from the hip. It was perfectly timed and very accurate, landed by Baez. It was a right cross, landed by a, followed by a, a left uppercut. And this one above, they both inside, but then left, left the house. Yeah, uh, Flores is on rubbery legs, beautiful left hook landed by Baez, uh, a glancing right cross. He is playing, this is song for every Mexicali fighter and resident, and Baez comes out strong to start the round. Swinging wild, desperation. Right crosses together with, with, the, with the jab. John Lair, re-walk John. Check out his podcast, good one, does a solo. I mean, he's, he's yeah, I think Baez has had his strongest rounds in rounds three, four, and five. He looked really good in round five. Four-year-old Leonardo Baez from Mexico in the black and gold. He's rocking the venom boots. He's very effective, but he hasn't been doing that consistency. Consistent. And, and by no means, he, he's learning a lot with this veteran. He's learning the grit of boxing and, and that good left hook to the body. That's what I want to see him throw. I think it was like a no contest. Yeah, it was bizarre. And Joel Diaz told his fighter Baez in the black and gold, finish him. Look at the punch stats. Through six rounds. Of course, it's Baez. Take the punch like he's throwing now. I think if Baez concentrated a little bit more in the body, punches as. As he continues to miss, he should continue to punch because he's going to connect with a Mexican warrior in there. But he's just too slow off the trigger. What I see Baez is not doing is taking his shots. And Joel Diaz told this fighter in the seventh, finish him. This round, go after him. Is he getting missing right here? I mean, he's, it's like he's underwater. Yep. He's just see the toll of the fights over the years. And the young fighter Baez, 24 years old. And I look at that and saying, okay, 
quality experience. But you can tell the corner was asking for more as Baez going to control this fight. Flores tweeted by Chris BZ who says, tough as old boots. And that's exactly what he was. <laughs> yes, he was. And uh, he was in this fight for three rounds. I actually um, scored round two even, 10 points each. But after the third round, it was all Baez. He got into his rhythm and he timed the, the older man well and did a nice assortment of punches. I liked his punch selection. Uh, I liked how Baez loosened up as the fight progressed and got better at um, slipping punches and moving about the ring. I would have liked to see uh, a more of a, a consistent body attack and a more consistent... For your winner by unanimous decision, representando Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico, Leonardo El Leon. B-Hop, you get the decision. Distance. You kind of want to see more from him, didn't you? Yeah. The age difference. It's Noemi Vasquez is 36 years old. She's a veteran of this sport. Next month, and then she's fighting in the Midwest the month after that. Dina really loading up to qualify for the real games. Solid right hook landed by Urbina. She thrown a lot of good right hooks, but this tight enough to get inside those gloves. And, and Urbina says that Bosquez is, is vulnerable to the right hand. So. Urbina making her U.S. debut. She was fighting in Mexico with a different promoter. Now a free agent. And tonight, and you know, she's coming out fighting that way. So they, there could be a nice round robin between uh, the three of these flyweight slash junior band weights, and there's other 112 and 115 pound female fighters that, that can... doesn't want to run with her. Just, her daughter runs sprints I see. at distance. But, and I was talking with Boska's back there, she the, said... We come from places that, uh, you know, we have to come to. This is one of those... She let her beat up with the white gloves. Nice compact stuff. Solid right, followed by left. Two good, good hooks. And Abina, she, keep, she keeps coming. You know, she don't back up and look and see her work. She continue to go to the left hand or the right hand. Watch your hands, watch your hands. Joel Diaz also serving as a cut man in the corner of Salem, Urbina. Urbina, real, as you mentioned, 17 on the home invasion. Uh, he was a standout amateur fighter. This was in their home in Phoenix. He stayed home that day to try to register for online prison. She said every fight, it's for her brother. He's the one that she followed to the gym. That she carries her with her when she's in a battle. Good combination from Urbina. Oh, oh she that hurt the yeah. yep, that hurt. But that was a combination. Off the right hand, there, left hook. On the ropes. Bosquez. Referee Tom Taylor saying, cover up. So Final coming. seconds. They come. Snapping back the head. And also survives the nation. The right hand and then the left. The You're left right. was the punch that really she didn't see. Yeah, and that's the punch that really knocks you out or buzz you. And that was a good combination punch because the right hand was like a throwaway. Right hand and then a left hook. That was the power, and we've seen it. Spots him. She's fighting, she's throwing punches. And she's been smart too, Doug. But she's not, she don't try to fight when she's hurt. We had to smile even as she was staggered, and she had the wherewithal to hold. All right, right hand comes short. But Urbina, she moves on the inside. And I didn't see what punch caused the legs to dip right there. I think it was that right oh, hand. Oh, no, I think it was a hook. Well, a combination. Yeah. The hook started it. The hook started, Doug, yeah. because that, that wobble. It shows, and I see, like, that, that, nat that natural fighting ability that um, brought us. And I think those are future matchups that are going to be very, very entertaining and hotly contested. They told her to finish it. 25 seconds. Can Urbina do what the corner told her? And knock out Boskis. Good strong right. Another overhand right. They go the distance. Good. Six good rounds between Urbina and Boskis. We'll come back with the decision. Urbina, Noemi, Boskis. A good scrap. That Billy Boone watching in Las Vegas. She enjoyed it. It's good to see the females put on a fight for the young ladies. Give them some inspiration and uh, they can learn a lot by watching Urbina. She's an excellent boxer, aggressive 
boxer, puncher, pressure fighter. Um, she's really a, a complete fighter in there. And um, she was as good as advertised, as good as I thought she would be. You liked it, Bernard? Yeah, I liked it. You know what? I liked the, also the skill level of, of both fighters. You know, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. But you like the, the, I see the skill factor in action. For you enter by unanimous decision. And still undefeated the fighting bride of Phoenix, Arizona, Sulem Urbina. She's now 12 and 0, Sulem Urbina. Good follow on Twitter. She's almost at 5,000 followers. Oscar Negrete and Alberto Melian. I think these uh, Bantamweights match up very well. They're close to the same age. Melian is just one inch taller. With Joshua Franco, I love the punch selection, as well as the aggression and the pressure and the volume punching against uh, Franco, even though he, he lost it on the scorecards. And actually, all three of those fights is tougher than what it looks like. Right, they, they, they can look at that stat. If they just go to Boxer, I can look at that. They can think, oh, this guy's against the professor, Joshua Franco, the other way prospect. These two know each other 10 years ago. They fought in the South America. Melian was the more decorated amateur. Um, both guys have great chins. I think it's going to go the distance, and it's just going to be, they're just going to go out. I mean, that's that veteran. That veteran know how to win, and they know, they know what to do, when to do it. And, and that's, not, that's part of learning the, the Working towards the ball, Raymond Tabugan, the main event. Body work for Negrete. And that right there, that's that Negrete veteran where he'll hold you and then push you and then land on you. And that's where he's best at nothing. If you look at Alberto Melian, there's going to be the Argentinian Lomachenko. Fight like a pro, you still think like a pro. And you're not as that amateur, just, you know, using a lot of energy, just throwing punches based on points. I mean, you need points here, but it's more me. Melian went back to the 2016 Olympics thinking he could win gold. Straight up a bit. Professional ring experience. Bernard, am I making too much of a big deal about that? Or? No, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of positioning and getting in that, that dominant uh, position to, to to win the round. I go through all my notes in here. Right. Both guys are training, and even the punches that just hit the body, they're not actually hitting. But what I like about the 118 pound division is those guys all fought each other. In a way, fought uh, Emmanuel Rodriguez in the row. Um, Maloney, Jason Maloney, he fought Rodriguez. All those guys you see in the top 10, they're all fighting each other. Two. Lost. Decided to come back down to 118 because the top division is the division. This is where they belong. You've seen the wrinkles from Melian switching. Being the aggressor, taking the lead. And this round is a close round of score for me. I mean, hasn't done that the last couple of rounds. No, he's, he's, he's falling into the trenches a little bit too much. Um, he's usually good in the trenches, but this guy's got an engine just like he does. Fight in the phone. And, you know, I think he's going to pay a price to get on two rounds from now because you see that he's starting to fight. He's very good. He has a high guard. He's very good at blocking punches on his forearms and his elbows um, and his biceps and shoulders. And some of these, his, his return punches are not as hard as Melian's, but I don't think Melian's skin is as good as Negrete's. And if you look at Melian's face, I see a left hook partially blocked. Left hook to the body that Melian got through to Negrete. There's a nice jab from Melian. Followed by a left hook to the ear. That not Tim Book Sales says, hey, I'm liking it. Fast pace. It's a slip. slip. But Negrete did try to sell it though, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he threw the punch as long. I'd like to see him step around with that jab, as a matter of fact. And great openings for the straight right. Good overhand right. And the punch on the fly. And Negrete is showing that he can do it. Completely different approach here in the sixth from his, his nickname. And left hook. Good left hook. I mean, well he's doubling. Yeah, he's doubling. Uh, less than a minute to go in the sixth round. Strong round for Oscar Negrete. Melian's swinging and missing a lot this round. Oh, he eats a left hook. And he got buzzed with that left hook. That left hook got his attention. Excellent round. The best one of the night for Oscar Negrete. Here in the sixth, the schedule for 10. The There's an uppercut that missed from Melian, and he ran, he walked right into that overhand right from Negrete. Negrete followed that up with a left uppercut. That's a beautiful right uppercut landed by Melian. 
But Negrete comes right back with the left hook, and that's because of the, the hand placement of Meliani. Never brings his hands back to his face. Either way, that thing round, and I only have Negrete up by one point. Yeah, so. do you judge by the good defense? And do you, you got to look at the offense also, because both. Nah, what he does is he pause. He switch, he switch hits, he switch stances, he'll he'll pause a couple minutes. Stop. It's Negrete with the combinations. One, two, and two in his last five fights. And Jessica Rosales has more. And then on your nose is not something that you like feel something and it might be sweat. But it's blood. So yeah, it's in your mind. Grete is he's chopping him up systematically. Look at look at the punch here. Uh, two or three punches. Like, that doesn't have an interesting part of his career though, because his last five fights, one, two, two. And what do you do with him? He's hype, a lot of buildup. And but he's third. Oh, he just ate a nice right hand from the That was to be a factor here. It will be. Saludos a la gente que nos está mirando en Argentina. All right. Beautiful right hand landed by Negrete from the outside. Nice jab connects from Negrete. Melian working his jab, but wait. Melian. Good red. uppercut. Good uppercut. It's good right hand uppercut. He's fought for a world title, so he's been in the deep waters. Punches landed by Brown. I still had that round nine from Negrete. Right hand, overhand right, those are earlier. Yeah. Hard. And you know he has to train and condition his, his body so well to be able to fight with his I'm sure there's a lot of knowledge that he can impart. Ten rounds and the Bucks will come back with the decision. Non-stop action, there's some good body work from Melian early on. And the overhand right, that was a money punch from Negrete. He landed it in almost every round. What gave him the edge in the majority rounds on my very unofficial scorecard. Melian switched tactics in the middle rounds, put pressure on Negrete, put him up against the ropes. Negrete was dangerous off the ropes, though. Very crafty, especially when he would get off those ropes. That was a nice left hook from Negrete. And then in the center of the ring, it was Negrete often beating Melian to the punch and landing the combinations. They threw a lot. Let's check out the punch stats. For your winner by unanimous decision, and crowned the new WBA International Bantamweight Champion, the fighting pride of Tierra de Colombia, Oscar El Jawar de Negrete. And Jaguar Negrete, unanimous decision, separated himself on the card. The ace of SoCal said it, he bet it, he got the Colombian. For our main event tonight. Sandoval is seven years younger at age 21, and he just turned 21 yesterday. He's taller by two inches. Aloha, Mexico. Shout out to all the Tomatero fans out there. Oh, and they clash heads. Your heads yeah. This is where the distance that both guys need to be until they get warmed up. Because right now he's way inside. And he does his damage in close. Wild oh. swing and miss. Is that all answers? That was a good left hand to the body. And all the boxing scribes tweeting away. Thanks for joining us tonight. And down. That was a knockdown. That was a knockdown. Yeah. That was an upper right hand. Uh, a really a counter. Both Sit. guys were throwing punches. Sit. Hey, Sandoval's okay. got there. Better, you said it was a hook. It was a left hook. Was a hook. I think you're right. It's off his jab, and um, he's, he he works very well with the power punches off the jab. In fact, he can he can hook. Even though you might have a guy a little hurt, you still be poised, and you work that left jab that you started all this. Because he got overexcited after he scored a knockdown, and he was getting a little bit too flamboyant by with leading. With he just threw a jab and left hand to the gut, to the body, which is a good shot. Well, it came off an exchange. He broke. So there's the jab. The jab and left hook. Okay, so he, he yeah. The left hook. yeah, he blocked it. He blocked that hook and countered with the left hook. Beautiful. That's nice. That is. A 21 year old able to do that? Yeah, catch and shoot like that. That's good work. 
Sandoval. Good right hand. Good right hand. And Ted Penny coming in. And a little hook behind him. His trainer actually told him, stop going to school so you can commit fully to boxing. Real work ethic. Well, that's part of being if you ain't smart. You don't get that yeah, yeah, the hardest smart. part about college is showing up. Exactly. Calmness. Yeah. Usually you see the just went up. Good job, but that right hand, that kind of man, Ryan Sotalia, told me, tell you God, it's tough, you'll go rounds, just don't know how much he's got left, and he's getting a future contender. In fact, there are, there are flyweight contenders that aren't as good, technically speaking. Body shot from Sandoval. Ooh, nice right hand from Tavagon. Sneaky right hand. Great story, crunch time. Same scene. Yeah, but Sandoval have to be aware of the peekaboo style because he's firing hard like that. Uh, the, that's the punches that, you know. Right above us. Makes that take it in. Show me something. When you're over it with the incredible El Nino Sandoval. See those punches. And the flyweight division, Doug, it's a different one. You can move guys faster, right? Yeah, uh, you see that. They win, and they hold on to those titles. And a matter of fact, Green Magazine's number one rated flyweight, Kosei Tanaka, was one of those that, guys. That deep division, but uh, a lot of action there. These guys were 111. Sabi down the Filipino trying to get off the road. And the ball just needs to keep working that jab, tapping the body, and softening the knee. So he got to keep throwing haymakers every time he responds to it. Ball just kind of shoves him off, gets just a little. He's Team Adidas. Is he? Yeah. yeah. The hook landed by Sandoval. He's out there, the amateur fighter out there. You just said the jab. You're more impressed with the fact that he's throwing a jab. And solid round again for Ricardo Sandoval. And Sandoval's really biting down his well, punches. He is. He's, he's, going, he's going for a kill now. Final he's seconds of the round in the corner. Looks at the rest of the step in there. Keep the elbow away first. Does. And Eddie Hernandez, the pressure at the end of the round from Sandoval. Yeah, so it's all start started with a, a short lead left hook, and it's uh, just two-fisted assault from Sandoval right now. But it's and, accurate. Yeah, and that right hand, that right hook stopped him in his tracks because he's buckled. He got to get off the ropes if he won another round. Right now, he's not in position to win. And he had to keep him up. Sandoval just coming out. He's too. He's hurt right now. Zone. He's hurt. And the referee right now might come in. The punches are thrown. There's not no response. This way. Filipino Raymond Tagubon. Nothing behind his punches. He's just absorbing a beating. Body shot. Looking into the eyes of the Filipino right above us. And he is just getting work. It is heavy bag work right now for Ricardo Sandoval on the seventh. Yeah, you're right, Beto. And uh, I would not be able to pose. And yeah, yeah there it goes. thank you, Good Eddie. Thank finally. you. And there was there was nothing on yeah. Tabudan's punches anymore. No, protect that young man. And he was just waiting in the wing to get to get hurt. Due to excessive blows, the official time comes to you. 143, round seven for your winner by KO. The birthday boy out of Riverside, California, y representando Sinaloa de Leyva, México, Ricardo El Niño Sandoval.